It's been a volatile week with some crazy reactions to earnings, but if you're holding the type of stocks I am, then it presents an opportunity to buy. Now there's one such company that used to be my number five position, but having taken advantage of the dip this week, is now recovered into my number one position. And for good reason. Despite some amazing performance over the last year, this company continues to sell under the radar and offers real growth potential. It's time to break out another industry. So get your sea legs on as I'm talking about the shipping industry. Whatever you buy and wherever you buy it from, there's a good chance if you take a look at the label, it's not made in your country. One thing I picked up from my experience in the motor trade was just how the majority of parts that make up a car come from manufacturers all over the world. Flywheels, alternators, batteries, bolts, they're all made from different factories in different places. This pattern is found in just about any company because whatever they make is often more cost effective to outsource the manufacture of components to specialist manufacturers than trying to make everything in-house. It's an important point to make when thinking about the shipping industry because when most people think of it they often think of the huge number of retail products that get shipped over from China in their nice pristine cardboard boxes before it's sold to them off the shelf. Retail is just a fraction of the shipping industry which is responsible for the transport of many manufacturing and wholesale goods. Oil, scrap metals, raw minerals and manufacturing materials, white goods, fuels, food and drink. Think of it this way, the world is pushing for electric vehicles, so tons of minerals mined for batteries from other countries have to be transported over to their respective countries of origin. And this isn't coming over by plane. The coffee industry is on a caffeine high, so those Cambodian coffee beans have to be transported over. The current chip shortage would be far worse without transport ships bringing them over from Taiwan Semiconductor for suppliers all over the world. The recent crisis between Russia and Ukraine has put intense pressure on the supply of gas for Europe, who, along with the US, have been trying to lessen their reliance on Russia by increasing their imports of LNG, liquid natural gas, from locations such as Norway and Qatar. COVID-19 brought about massive fluctuations in supplies across the world, resulting in consumer demand for shipping services to increase massively, whilst production was reduced and supplies limited. Shipping companies have been able to increase their freight rates to make the most of limited capacity, so profits have been increasing drastically, with some companies hitting record margins. UNCTAD's report from 2021 states they expect rates to continue to increase as supply continues to lag behind demand, and despite the price increases, they estimate global trade for 2021 to reach $28 trillion, an increase of 23% from 2020. From a worldwide perspective, trade is uneven but has averaged 14% in import and export growth compared to 2019. Trade has been recovering as we come out of the pandemic and data on freight transport since 1996 shows that the industry hasn't failed in showing consistent growth for decades. Now this is why I've been investing in the shipping industry for quite a while and why my particular choice is a newcomer to the industry that has been expanding at a massive rate and that's Zim Integrated Shipping Services. Here's the breakdown. Zim Shipping, or Zim for short, is an Israeli company operating since 1945 to become one of the top 20 transportation companies in the world, with over 4,200 employees, over 170 offices around the world, and headquarters in Israel, USA, Germany, and Hong Kong. They operate over 70 weekly lines and services, covering all major trade routes with regional connections. Zim are new to the stock market, having entered the New York Stock Exchange in January last year, just two months before declaring record profits of $587 million. Their stock has been on a steady climb over the first 12 months, climbing over 342% from their IPO price of $15 to a recent high of $65. Now numbers like that might make some investors nervous. After all, over the last year we've seen many companies ride a wave of hype only to come crashing down. But if you've been following my channel then you know I'm not one that gets swept along with the hype. This rally is fully justified by Zim's performance and I think there is plenty of growth to come. Now this is where I bring in the financials. Over the 
Okay, so if we start with revenue, we have outstanding performance year on year with Zim. They were just short of $4 billion revenue in 2020, but as you can see, revenue has been rising rapidly, and in quarter three, they hit a record $3.1 billion, and having passed $8.5 billion in the trade in 12 months, it won't be any surprise if they report $9 billion of 2021. Net income has been following behind, showing consistent growth in profits, hitting $1.9 billion in quarter three. And they aren't struggling with cash, having been squirreling away every quarter to $2.5 billion by quarter three. And they've been enhancing this further by how much debt they've paid off. Zim have amassed almost $8 billion in assets and shareholder equity has grown to an outstanding $3.1 billion. This data shows exactly how far the company has grown in just one year, with Zim already on a rocket to the moon with their performance. It's incredible to see a company with such amazing and consistent growth in such a short period of time. And yet it appears the analysts continue to undervalue the company, which has beaten their estimates each quarter since they entered the market. No! No! The key to understanding any business is determining how the success of a company is measured. In the shipping industry, this is best measured in TEUs. These are 20-foot equivalent units, the technical term for those typical cargo containers we see in the movies. The success of shipping companies can be viewed as having the most capable fleet in terms of TEU storage and transportation, having the best routes and in-demand contents. The latest figures on the size of shipping trade from Danons puts the worldwide trade at 220 million and growing at 7.9% year on year, bringing the total to 231 million in 2022. Zim are currently boasting a fleet of 113 ships in operation and they've purchased another 8 second-hand vessels, increasing their fleet by 7%. Zim's total fleet boasts a capacity of 1 million TEUs. By comparison to some of the older, larger and more established companies in the industry, this puts them about halfway on the list. In fact, if we look at the industry from the perspective of the global shipping alliances, of which the main three are 2M, The Alliance and Ocean Alliance, Zim only takes up 1.6% of the industry. But the reason I think Zim makes the most promising investment is their outstanding growth. One of the consistent factors in their financial growth is their fleet growth, and they continue to increase the number of TEUs they're able to transport each quarter. Zim's last quarter has seen an increase of 16% in carrier volume and 174% increase in their freight rates, resulting in a 210% increase in revenue. Although their scale means they barely register on a chart against some of the bigger competitors, if we compare their rate of growth instead, Revenue has grown on average 36.9% year on year and 31.6% each quarter. These figures suggest they have actually outperformed the competition in terms of growth. Business has been good and that's how they've been able to get enough cash to significantly reduce their debt. Zim are preparing for this increase in demand through ongoing acquisitions to bolster their fleet. Their previous guidance for the year was $4.8 to $5.2 billion, but they now expect to hit $6.2 to $6.4 billion, which is a 30% boost in performance. And that's worth a stern look. And if that wasn't good enough, not only have they increased their dividend by 25%, from $2 to $2.5, they have announced that future dividends will change from annually to quarterly. And who doesn't love a dividend? <laughs> Of course, it's not all plain sailing and there are disruptions in the industry. The continuing issues due to COVID variants have caused issues in production around the world, along with increases in fuel costs and various political events. The increase in US-China tensions aren't helping, particularly the ban on goods coming from the Xinjiang province due to slave labour. Yet, world politics has not had any significant impact on production coming from China. Still, world threats exist, such as the Gulf Sky hijacking in July 2020 and the various bombings of oil tankers around Iran. You may recall in March last year when the Suez Canal was obstructed by the Ever Given, who ironically couldn't give way. 
This resulted in more than 400 vessels with $60 billion worth of cargo being held up or having to divert around the Cape of Good Hope, South Africa. This might seem trivial, but the four to six days that those ships were delayed created a massive backlog of products and a logjam at ports when those ships eventually arrived all at once. But as they struggle to keep up, the ports have been implementing fines to the transport companies for containers left on site. None of this was helped by the occasional storm or ship fire that ends up in the media. Fortunately, despite the media attention, these events tend to be few and far between compared to the mass volume of ships that travel and there is a shared world interest in protecting those routes. So I'm not put off. Shipping is a dull industry, and Zim, having been on the market for just a year, continues to sell under the radar. The general consensus from online analysts has the company around fair value, meeting the typical price target. But at $65, they are trading at just 2.35 times earnings, far below an industry average of 5.4. And at 0.9 times sales, along with other impressive metrics, they are largely undervalued compared to their competitors, possibly trading at around a third of their fair value. Now I've been buying into Zim since August and as the company continues to perform there is plenty of growth potential and I'm continuing to buy in at the current rates. Now that's all I have for now and if you thought I'd run out of sailing puns, I'm afraid not. I'm currently in the process of going over every company in my portfolio starting with the largest positions. So check out my other videos in my channel and remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you have any thoughts or a company you want me to cover, then please comment below, let me know. Until next time. <laughs>